Richard, welcome. Welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Uh, so you had a, um, if I understand correctly, a sort of unusual path to fiction writing in that um, you weren't totally sure as a young man kind of which way you wanted to go. You, had a, you were lured towards the sciences, toward the hard sciences, yeah, but chose not to. Can you talk about that? Were you somebody who was always privately writing and reading, or were you really not sure which way you wanted your life to go? I didn't do a lot of creative writing as a, as a younger uh, child, um, as, as a lot of writers do. Um, I was much more attuned to uh, various sciences. I think, you know, from, from the earliest age uh, into my teen years, uh, I, I just had a, a shopping list of, of disciplines that interested me and I bounced right. from one to the other. I, I really uh, was oriented toward uh, um, the mathematical and the physical uh, sciences, chemistry. Um, I, I discovered writing in my late teens, first poetry and, and, and uh, later fiction. And it was, you know, the, the, the great discovery that I had hit upon a field that uh, allowed me uh, to not have to make any choices that, uh, you know, this idea that I somehow had to pick one thing to do and close the door on all these thousands of other things, you know, it was a great you know, source of panic to me. Right. Uh, so, you know, that, that generalist's uh, curiosity and the generalist's skill, um, you know, uh, they, they finally found a home in, in, a, in a way of living that allows me to vicariously pursue the road not taken. You know, every, every few years I can, I can go down another path and follow one or another of these uh, ways of seeing the world that, uh, that have always been so interesting to me. Uh, it's almost like not having to give up anything. Right, well, you get to simply have your curiosity I always think for writer, the most important thing. And in fact, I would say I talk a lot of times to beginning writers and writers who are, you know, beginning their journey. I think sometimes the difference between the professional writer, just someone who's been at it for a while and has really um, committed their life in this one way or really consumes their life is that the professional understands their curiosity is enough for them to, it's worth pursuing whatever interest them where sometimes the beginners think, well, everyone's curious about something, what makes mine special, but to sort of honor and to realize how unique your curiosity is to you. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I, I think the joy of writing uh, is that you, you move your perspective, even as you're building upon uh, what you already believe to be the case in the world. And every new book becomes <laughs> a different kind of experiment and yeah. you know you're constantly proving yourself wrong and and uh, that's that's the forward motion you know the yeah. um the 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 refocalizing and the the shift in perspective is itself a source of personal reflection and personal growth yeah uh, and i you know i i, I was also very attracted to the idea back when I was young, uh, as opposed to some of the other things that I was interested in, uh, of having a career where you peaked late in life. I mean, wow. with a lot wow, of- Wow, that, <laughs> that is very rare for a young person. Usually, most yeah. of you want it right now. <laughs> <laughs> right? Nope. I mean, I, I realized at the age of, of 20, with my interest in mathematics, that I had about eight or nine good years to get my best. That's work right. Done. It all happens young with, with mathematicians, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. and the same is true in, 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 in some other experimental sciences. And, and, you know, when I heard about this, the, the fact that 
you know, novelists often do their best work in their 40s and 50s. That seemed like, wow, that's, you know, that's <laughs> way down the road. So here I am at 64, feeling like I'm finally figuring out how to. How a few to things. Thing. A few yeah. things. Well, yeah. You know, uh, so your last book, uh, Overstory, uh, won the Pulitzer Prize. And, and you've, you know, you've been publishing, I think your first book, uh, which the farmers on their way to a dance, that was, that was your first attempted novel. Is that, I mean, is that the first novel you sat down to no. write? No. no, I actually wrote uh, an apprentice work before that, that okay. I, that I didn't publish. Okay. Yeah. But so you've been at this a while, you know, yes. and, I, and that book did that book. 40 did years. Well, for, yeah, yeah. It's a long time. Right. Yeah. Yep. And so, so now it wins the Pulitzer prize and that brings with a certain kind of attention. Uh, you strike me as someone who's relatively private, maybe, I don't know if you, or if you love to get out there and, be the center of attention or not, but did that, did, were you able to go back to work and just say, okay, I'm going to block that out. That was great. It's nice. But now back to work or did it, did it rally you a little bit? Just sometimes the, you know, the hubbub. Yeah. The, the, the size of the effort, uh, the length of the book, the, uh, the multiple narrative frames, yeah. uh, the amount of the, the, the length of time that it took me to write the book were all exhausting for, for yeah. uh, someone who is no longer a kid. Right. <laughs> um, and it, it did take a while to recover from it. And because the book was successful, it also took a while to refocus and, and to, yeah. you know, to withdraw again from, from the, uh, you know, all the hubbub surrounding that book. Yeah. Uh, so this, this book uh, ended up being a very different kind of thing. It's about, it's less than half the length. Um, it's, it, it concentrates on two characters rather than 10. Right. Um, it unfolds over the course of a single year instead of centuries. And it's all told in one voice. It's all the first person uh, story of this, father of this right. very intense but uh uh you know but joy-filled uh and fear-filled uh nine-year-old boy what did you learn about storytelling and writing uh when you finished bewilderment what did you learn that you're going to take to your next book do you think anything new something new popping you think ah i like that's a new anything Maybe just about yourself, or I don't know. Yeah, um, it's a very interesting question, and honestly, I I I haven't introspected on it in precisely that way, yeah. because for me, that learning process is is continuous from one book to the next, and also. Yeah. Um, gradated over the course of, of writing and rewriting and rewriting. Um, I would say what this book brings that's new to me that I had not explored in quite the same way over the previous four decades and dozen books is a kind of a kind of rawness that derives from the constraints on the size of the cast, the locations involved, and the time involved. And that this intensification through simplification, uh, rather than significance through contrast you know like so so many of my other books were set up to uh to juxtapose stories that were unfolding in different narrative frames right. stories that had different uh focalizers uh you know that 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 constant sense of getting meaning through contrast this this book was was something else it was an attempt to achieve deeper emotional resonance through holding still or through keeping, keeping the um, me mechanical narrative of the story much simpler and more straightforward than I've done in the past. Interesting. All right. Well, I got one more question for you, Richard. Just one more. And what I'd like you to do is finish this sentence. Finish this sentence. If writing, 
don't know if you can answer this. You poor guy. I think you've got so many things you could say about this. But if writing, all the writing you've done has taught you anything, it's taught you what? To hold still. It reminds me what James Joyce, I don't know if you've read in Portrait of the Artist, he describes the, the proper relationship of the artist is to behold, not his stasis. Yeah, that's yeah, true. Good answer, my friend. Good answer. <laughs> Thank you.